What's going on, boys and girls? Jim here, RCAD. Today is March 31st, 2024, Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, everybody. Uh, my apologies once again for not getting videos out here in a timely fashion. Uh, a lot of stuff going on this year. I recently quit smoking cigarettes for the my channel subscriber uh, people there just so I could put more money into the channel instead of giving it to Big Tobacco. And uh, nothing against Big Tobacco. I was a big fan for 30 years. <laughs> I just decided to uh, quit the day after New Year's. Not a New Year's resolution. I just was sick and tired of putting my money into cigarettes and wanted to uh, uh, utilize that money with the RC Car channel instead. So my apologies for not getting videos out as of late. Uh, apparently, I I really like to smoke cigarettes while I was editing videos. So <laughs> I've got a huge backlog of videos, boys and girls, a gigantic backlog of videos. I've been doing videos still since uh, our last video, which was right around Christmas time. And that was running the Kyosho Blizzards out in the snow. Uh, my niece's Blizzard two, uh, Blizzard King 2.0, my Midnight Blizzard and my brother's Trail King was our last video that we had out. And uh, that was a few months ago. So my apologies on that. So I've got a big backlog of videos. Uh, I just was having trouble with the editing and not having a cigarette. So uh, I'm pretty much three months into not smoking at this point in time and have, haven't had a cigarette yet. Uh, quick cold turkey, no helps from any kind of pharmaceuticals or nicotine gum or patches or anything like that. Just quick cold turkey. And like I said, the only thing that I'm having issues with is editing videos. I'm not missing it with coffee. I'm not missing it after meals or anything like that. Uh, I'm not missing it when I wake up in the morning or before I go to bed at night. The, the biggest issue for me is editing videos. So <laughs> once again, I've got a huge backlog of videos. I've got uh, several videos that we did. One was a build vi video here on our Volvo. And that was the purpose of this video, video that we're doing right now, because I've got the run video for the for the vehicle, but we lost the build series. I had 57 videos at 23 minutes long a piece for the build series on this vehicle, and I did that uh, starting at Christmas over over the Christmas holiday, and finished up just uh, at the beginning of January. And I believe we did our first run on with the vehicle on January 8th. Now I just seen our camera flash fo uh, flip here one time. Uh, that's another issue that we're having is with our camera, our video camera. And my apologies here for this little uh, start up our intro here to our Volvo. But for the channel subs, uh, once again, I recently quit smoking cigarettes. So um, I, I got this uh, huge backlog of videos. I just kept recording more videos and more videos and more videos. And the last video I recorded was an unboxing video on an RC airplane of all things. Because <laughs> yes, in that time, in that three months that have transpired, uh, I've, I've, uh, turned, turned another year older. I had a birthday in between there on February 25th and I received a, uh, another RC vehicle, a truck, a four x four that I did an unboxing video, a modification video and a run video on, which are three more videos <laughs> that we're going to try to consolidate down a little bit. And I also did an unboxing video on an airplane. So yeah, there's a transmitter for the airplane right over there. That is a Spectrum DXS transmitter. I'm not going to tell you what kind of plane it is. But uh, I came with that transmitter, so. Uh, no, we're not branching into airplanes so much on the, on the channel. I just want to kind of broaden my own RC horizons and uh, learn how to fly, essentially. We might include an airplane here and there, you know, maybe with some other vehicles. Maybe we'll, we'll come in on an airplane and then switch over to a vehicle or, or drive a vehicle to an airplane and take off from there. I'll see it. My camera just locked up. Uh, camera locked up. See, there we go. Camera issues. <laughs> Just to prove a point on that. All right. So uh, once again, having some camera issues. And what happened here was that while I was filming the unboxing video on our airplane there, my camera started inadvertently erasing uh, videos that were at the bottom of the list to make more room for the, for the current videos because <laughs> I had so many videos on backlog. So uh, it started deleting our Volvo videos. And it deleted uh, right around 10 videos off the beginning of that series. So we had 57 videos in total, 23 minutes long a piece, and it deleted 10 of those roughly in the process of me editing uh, my unboxing video for that airplane, which is more of a show and tell because I don't know anything about airplanes, boys and girls. So more of a show and tell for you guys and gals on my channel uh, talking about the airplane uh, than anything else. I don't want to take anything away from people who have uh, our YouTube channels that are based on airplanes, strictly based on airplanes. I don't want to take anything away from those guys because I'm more of a crawler guy, more of an RC construction, more terra firma, uh, building and modifying cars. As you all know, we modify just about everything we have, and, and I'd like to show you guys and gals how to do all those modifications as well, so uh, just to better your own vehicles. Nevertheless, um, Volvo A68 here, we had our build video uh, on this guy, and we lost 10 of those videos, which are very important videos 
uh, starting with the first one, which was pulling the vehicle off of the shelf, which was sitting up there for about a year, right up in that open area. <laughs> Just like that lunchbox sitting there, which was, has been sitting there for a while. Um, it, it's, and then it, we pulled the box down, we opened it up, and we started building it. Uh, so I think on the 10th video, we were right around page 4, maybe page 3 or page 4 on the manual, which isn't too far in, but it's enough to ruin a build series. So... I end up just deleting the rest of those just because, you know, what we lost is what we lost and we can't get that back because the truck was already built and we already did a run video at that point in time. Uh, we did that run video on January 8th and I was doing this unboxing video on the airplane, <laughs> uh, it, like maybe uh, end of February and uh, beginning of March. So uh, quite a ways afterwards. Nevertheless, we lost that footage, so that is the whole uh, point of this video here, boys and girls. We're going to move into our run video on the Timmy Volvo. My apologies for not giving you guys and gals a build video on it. Um, the video, the truck's been out for a long time, so I'm sure other people have a, a build series on this thing. Um, I'm sure there's got to be one out there on YouTube. I haven't looked personally, but I'm, I'm assuming there is. <laughs> My apologies uh, for losing the one that we currently had. So, uh, What did you miss? Well, you didn't really miss much at all. Uh, we built it up in stock form, built it to the stock uh, configuration. We didn't put four-wheel steering on it. We did not put four-wheel steering on there. But that is something that I might do in the future after our first run. When you watch the rest of this video and we go into the first run, you're going to see areas where we could have used our four-wheel steering. Now, I didn't put the four-wheel steering on there because I have plans on using this uh, tipper truck as an actual working tipper truck, something that we can use in conjunction with our legendary and Wina construction equipment. We have the le legendary... Uh, loader over there, the, the Buckster, our legendary tippers over here. We got a wine of 1593, 1550, and 1580 sitting back there that are all highly modified and uh, need a good solid six wheel drive dump truck with limited suspension and real rubber tires that can go off road <laughs> and not get stuck in its own shadow. And that was the whole purpose of this vehicle. So, our first run video, check this one out. We did two, we ran two 2S two battery packs through it and one 3S battery pack. Uh, pretty long video, a little over an hour long here, a little bit longer adding this part into it. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to give you guys and gals a little prelim as to what was going on and an explanation as to what was going on around here on the channel, as well as a little uh, uh, walkthrough here on our Volvo before we go into the run uh, run video. So the first two batteries we ran were these WL Toys 3S light, or 2S LiPos. This is a 3,000 milliamp or 3 amp 25C uh, the C is your discharge rate. That's how fast or slow the battery discharges. The higher you go up on the C rating, the faster the battery discharges. The lower you go, the slower the discharge rate. Now, the discharge rate, that, that comes down to uh, when you pull the throttle, how much punch it has. When you initially stab the gas, how much initial uh, takeoff punch it has. It has nothing to do with your top end speed. It's just how fast the battery discharges, how fast it dumps out that juice when you hit the trigger. So 25C is relatively slow and even. It's not bottom of the line. A lot of receivers and stuff use uh, like a, a 3C or a 4C, uh, much lower than 25. But a lot of higher-end uh, stadium trucks and things of that nature might use 50C and higher, maybe 100C or, or even more than that. But that's just how fast the battery discharges. So uh, the milliamps, the 3,000 milliamp, which is uh, how many amps the battery is, that has to do with how long the vehicle runs for. So the higher your number you go on your milliamps, the longer runtime you're going to have with your vehicle. If you're going to be powering up a lot of lights and other accessories, then you want a high milliamp with a lower C rating. So maybe 5,000, 6,000, 8,000 milliamps, and 25C or 30C, somewhere in that area, as far as your discharge rate goes. So we ran two WL Toys, 3,000 milliamp, 25C packs through this thing. These are covered in duct tape. Uh, just to keep them somewhat waterproof, because I use these on my Kyosho Blizzard. Two of these guys in there, just like that, back to back. <laughs> One for each motor in that vehicle. But we were having problems with our battery tray. It wasn't quite big enough to fit in a standard 7.2 volt pack without doing some modifications, which was another bit video that I did. And that was modifying our bed slightly so that we could fit a uh, larger battery pack in there. So we started out by running two of these guys through there. And we finished out the video with this Gen's Ace 3S LiPo. This one is a 2200 milliamp, 2.2 amp, uh, 45C. So a little bit faster discharge on this one. And this one has been Plasti dipped to make it, uh, air quotations, waterproof. Because I was using this with my WL Toys 10428 hydroplane truck way back in 2016. So she's been around for a little while. 
And so we finished off the, the, the video with that one. And we had that one wedged right here in between the bed uh, support and the bed itself. All right, so all the parts that we see below or in front of us right now are the parts that we're going to add on to the truck to try to turn this thing into an actual working tipper truck once again. And maybe try to lower the gearing. Uh, the gearing on this is very, very limited on this vehicle. You really can't do anything with the pinion gear. Um, to me, it has two set locations on the on the transmission for pinion gear sizes. One of them is a 19 tooth, I want to say, and the other one is like a 23 tooth or something like that. Uh, but they're two set positions. So you can either have it in A or you can have it in B, and there's nothing in between. And that is because the uh, pinion gear goes directly to one of the spur gears or one of the well one of the counter gears this, this vehicle is all gears from front to back so there's actually like no real spur gear and a spur gear that it goes to or the gear that it goes to is just another one of the counter gears that's in line with all the rest of them essentially and it's relatively small so it's it's the gearing is pretty tall we've got a small counter gear and a kind of a big pinion gear the 19 tooth or 18 tooth is the smallest one that we can use out of the two so the smaller you go on your pinion, the more low-end power you have. The taller you go on your pinion, or the more teeth you go on your pinion, the bigger you go, the more top-end speed you have. When it comes to your counter gear or your spur gear, the larger you go, the more low-end power you have. The smaller you go, the more top speed you have. So this one has a small counter gear and a, well, a not very small pinion gear. <laughs> so it's kind of built for speed more than low-end torque and there's not much we can do to it to get more low-end torque out of it other than to change the motor uh, to go with a larger turn motor when it comes to turns on your motor the lower the turn number the more high uh, more rpms you get out of it the more high uh, speed and the higher the turn number the lower the rpms and the more torque you get out of it so uh, 85 turn would be a pretty slow motor and yeah, but it would have a lot more low-end torque compared to like a 12 turn a 12 turn would would have a lot more RPMs. <laughs> so uh, we starting, we're starting off with our stock motor. Not too sure what that is. I'm assuming it's a 27 turn. And we have a 55 turn right here on the side that we're going to put in here next uh, that has adjustable RPMs or adjustable timing. So we can crank it up a little bit and get more, a little bit more torque out of it or a little bit more RPM out of it. And, uh, you know, maybe counter it a little bit there on as far as our gearing goes. But we can't do much to the gearing. I think the only way we can, we might be able to drop it one tooth possibly. But once again, the transmission has two set positions on the transmission, so it's either an A or a B. So there's no slider to go in between, so you can't slip the motor up and down in between. Uh, but we might be able to drill new holes and possibly drop down one tooth. And that's it. We're only going to be able to drop down one tooth. I think it's we have an 18 tooth in here. I, I bought a medley of pinion gears for this thing, uh, starting off with a, a, an 11 tooth going all the way up to uh, that 23 tooth. And the 17 tooth, I think, is the only one that we'll be able to use. So we have an 18 in there right now. And I think we'll probably be able to get the 17 in there if we do some custom drilling. And this is a mod 0.6 gear for this one, this thing's transmission. So I have a whole medley of these gears, starting with the 12 tooth going all the way up to a 23, I think. And the 17 is the only one that I think we might be able to uh, get away with. Mid-video interruption, just so I can explain this pinion gear, spur gear, counter gear situation to you guys and gals out there a little bit easier. Once again, our transmission is nothing but gears from front to rear. Transmission slash chassis slash uh, frame, whatever you want to call it. So nothing but gears from front to rear. Our rearmost differential, three idler gears, which are swapping directions. Back to our center differential. Back through several counter gears, going from uh, small to large, small to large, small to large all the way across to the front. Now our motor sits right here in between these two small counter gears. Now I mentioned before here about our pinion gear and only having two different choices which is what we have. We've got an 18 and a 20. Two different holes right here for the motor. Uh, 18 tooth and a 20 tooth boys and girls that's it. I said 19, 23 but it's not. It's 18 and 20. And once again we are pushing two gears with that one pinion gear not just one. So if we were just pushing one uh, pinion gear to one spur gear, our adjustments are a little bit more infinite and a little bit easier to deal with. But when we're pushing, trying to spin two gears at the same time that are locked in place with one pinion gear, your sizes are limited. You can only go so small before it just slides through here like a hot dog in a hallway and doesn't make contact with either one. So once again, 18 and 20 are our two choices. We're pushing these two counter gears right here. 
I think, once again, that a 17 is about as small as we can possibly go before we're not making contact with either one of these gears. A 17 will be fine. I think we can make contact with the gears just fine. A 16 would be pushing it, and it'll probably start stripping out gears. But with the 17, we're going to have to drill new holes. Uh, one back here and one up here, or vice versa, maybe one over here and one up there, depending on the configuration and which way we're going with that as to how we're looking at things. So right here are some leftover gears. These are the actual gears that are in the, in the uh, uh, vehicle. It's our largest counter gear, mid-size counter gear. And this little guy right here is actually, technically speaking, your spur gear. <laughs> this is what we're driving, this little gear right here with our pinning gear. So once again... Talking about gear ratios, the larger you go on your counter gear, the more low-end power you have. The smaller you go, the more top speed you have. The smaller you go on your pinion gear, the more low-end power you have. The larger you go, the more top speed you have. So with a gear like this, of this size, using a pinion gear of basically the size of my finger, that's really, it's a pretty tall ratio right there. <laughs> basically, in layman's terms, this baby is built for speed. That is the moral of the story, and it's going to be hard to slow it down. We can slow it down in several different ways. Once again, we can step it down one tooth on the pinion gear, but that's not much. That's not much of a difference to go from one tooth down. I mean, it's a very small step, especially considering how large our um, uh, counter gear is, this guy right here, or how small our counter gear is. Now, we can uh, get a little bit more low-end power out of the vehicle if we went to a smaller tire. Right now, we're using a small set of 1.9s. 1.9s are the wheel size. Not the tire size, just the wheel size, the outer diameter of the wheel or the inner diameter of the tire. And just like a real car, um, tire sizes vary according to wheel sizes. You can have a 15-inch wheel with all kinds of different tires, ranging from uh, 18 inches all the way up to <laughs> 44s or 48 inches. I mean, you can uh, tire sizes vary according to wheels. So 1.9s are the wheel size that we're using on the vehicle currently. It came with 2.2s on them, which are 2.2 inches, but the 2.2 tires are essentially the same outer diameter as the 1.9s that we have for it. Once again, now if I want to run smaller tires, I think the 1.9s I have on here are pretty much the smallest 1.9s that you can get. Uh, anything smaller than this, we're going to have to drop it down to, like, let's say, some 155s, like these RC 4-wheel drive Trail Finder 2 uh, tires. The stock tires that come on an RC 4-wheel drive Trail Finder 2, which are going to be significantly smaller compared to... Um, the 1.9 that we have on here, which is basically this diameter. So that would look a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> but that would give us a lot more low-end power if we went to a smaller tire. Um, that's one other way we can go, other than using the portal drive units off of the Dyna head. That's the only other way that we're going to be able to lower our gearing on this. So uh, very limited on our gearing situation right here. Once again, uh, it would be a lot easier if we were only pushing one uh, counter gear or one spur gear, but we're actually pushing two. The motor's going right up in here between these two points. And we're spinning both of these gears. One half of it is going to the front differential right here. So the front half of the pinion gear is pushing the front differential, <laughs> and the back half of the pinion gear is powering everything across the back. So that's a little bit more drag on the motor right there, the fact that we're pushing two uh, counter gears at the same time with our one pinion gear. So it would have been nicer if we could uh, have a little bit more adjustability right here. But there's just only so far we can go. I mean, you can get an adjustable motor plate right here. So you can spin your motor uh, fore and aft or left and right and get a little bit more movement out of it if you had a single counter gear. <laughs> but when we're going to two counter gears like this and we're slipping it in between the two up and down vertically, there's only so much room. So 18 and a 20 is what our stock position provides on a vehicle, 18 tooth and a 20 tooth. Once again, I think we can drop it down to a 17. We're going to have to drill new holes to do it, but I think it might be doable. Otherwise, to get more lower, low gearing out of this or to get more lower, low end power out of it, we're going to have to re go, uh, go to our motor and step, step it up on the turn ratio, go to an 85 turn or 80 turn ratio on the motor, maybe a 550 motor in a high turn ratio such as an 80 turn, perhaps a brushless motor. A brushless motor is going to give us a little bit more sway up and down versus a brush motor. So if we have an 80 turn brush motor and we get a uh, brushless motor that's the equivalent of that, that's going to give us a little bit more low end and a little bit more top end versus that brushed motor. So a brushless motor will give us just a little bit more sway on either side compared to a brushed. 
All right, so there we go on that nonsense. Once again, we've got a lot of leftover parts. This is all we have left over on our stickers. <laughs> and we had a ton of stickers, boys and girls. I want to say uh, at least 40-some stickers that we put on this vehicle. It was an insane number of, number of stickers that we put on here. Might have been right around 46 stickers, I think, that we put on here. They are all numbered individually. So there's 46 right there. A lot of stickers, once again, you had to cut them all out individually, so big pain in the butt on that. Once again, uh, four-wheel steering. We'll probably get around to putting this on here at some point in time, and we will do a separate video for that as well. Uh, when we get around to putting the four-wheel steering on here. Once again, a lot of leftover parts. We've had these three counter gears right here that are leftover, so those few leftover stickers. A whole pile of bushings here. We used a Fast Eddie's bearing kit in our vehicle. We're not being sponsored by anybody, but that is what we use. So we've got all our bushings left over, nylon and bronze bushings. Our four-wheel steering parts in here. Kind of trying to keep this stuff separate here in a uh, servo container. <laughs> a lot of chassis parts left over as well. Blister packs that are left over um, with uprights on here. Servo horns, wheel hexes, other such things. Um... Parts for other Tini vehicles, but there's a lot of blister packs in here. Several, several of these blister packs they give you uh, more than one just because of their repeating parts on the vehicle. So um, we've got a couple of bumpers on here. There's a bumper right there, and servo mounts right there. Some control arms right here. Some more shock tubes down there. <laughs> Another bumper right here. Body mounts as well. These are some body mounts stuck on the same uh, uh, blister pack. So body mounts and uh, bumpers and other such things. <laughs> a lot of leftover parts. If we wanted to take the bed off of it, once again we can. Uh, we would have to have a battery hold down to keep our battery in place and we've got that right here as well. So. A lot of excess parts left over from our build, which is nice to have a little bit of extra spare parts. To me, as you know, you usually have a little bit of leftover parts. My biggest complaint about this model, putting together a Tamiya kit in general, is just that there's not enough grease. They don't give you enough grease, not nearly enough. They basically tell you to add grease everywhere on the model. Basically, wherever you're looking, they're, you're putting grease on something. Like right here, putting grease on all these screws. I got grease there and grease here. And we're at the back of the manual at this point in time. But there's just so many places that we're just like grease, 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 grease. <laughs> uh, we're looking at several linkages, so there's really nothing to grease here. But, uh, and electronic setups. They're installing shock screws. They want you to put a little bit of grease on. All this nonsense. So grease, 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 grease. All the way down to chassis. All these indications for grease on things. More grease. And to me, it just does not give you enough grease. Especially by the time you get done doing the transmission. And you grease up everything inside of here, along with your differentials and greasing those up. Which, by the way, we should put in some kind of diff putty or something in there to limit our slip on our differentials. But by the time you get done greasing all this stuff up, as well as greasing up other little areas on the chassis, like this point right here, where this little plastic block slides into, and this other point down here where this other plastic block slides into, which is actually like a, a pin locator for your upper and lower control arms for the center axle. And that's basically just a straight through shot into the chassis. And they want you to use a little bit of anti-wear grease and smear some on the upper and lower portion of this plastic part before you slide it into place to keep the grease in, or to keep the dirt out of the, out of the transmission. And I used some axle uh, bearing grease, some regular wheel automotive wheel grease and packed it in the back half of these areas back here along with all these little spots on a chassis where there's an open air hole along this transmission which it has a lot of. Uh, I just put grease on the back half of all those points just to seal out the elements. And to me it wants you to kind of do that anyways when you're building this kit as far as putting grease above and below on your bushings. Just to make sure that that is nice, nicely well greased. Now there's such a thing as putting in too much grease and which will uh, create a bind. So you don't want to use too much grease, but 
when your transmission consists of nothing but gears, <laughs> well, not your transmission, but your entire chassis is nothing but gears. I mean, we've got one, two, three, four, five, plus our two bevel gears on the inside of here, and three star gears on the inside of here. And we got one counter gear here, another counter gear right there, another counter gear right here, our motor in between. We actually got counter gear to this gear, to that gear, to this gear, to this gear, to that gear, to this gear, to that gear, to that gear, to this gear, to that gear, to that gear, to that gear. So you're greasing in between each one of these gears, each one of these counter gears, high and low, all the way along, plus the inside of your differentials. And above and below the differentials when you're uh, putting in the bushings. Excuse me for moving the camera all around here. I'm trying to look through the camera while I show you, you guys and gals all this stuff. So once again, they don't they don't give you nearly enough grease. <laughs> they also want you to gre grease up all your CVDs and uh, dog bones and screws and shanks. and um, You're adding grease everywhere on this thing. And they just don't give you nearly enough grease. So that's my only real complaint with uh, the Tamiya kits. Is that do they do not include enough grease? Once again, there's our two pinion choices, 18 and 20. And they would be sitting in the two different positions. And if we add a 17 tooth pinion gear on here, that means we're probably going to have to leave our 18 position in its spot and drill another hole maybe up here past the 18. Or maybe in between 18 and 20. It just depends on how we're going to have to work this out. <laughs> but it's not going to be easy to uh, try to wedge in a different gear. And we also run the risk of, if we go too small on a gear and move our motor too far upward here in between to make contact, we might hit this post right here on the chassis. That's a uh, molded in plastic post for joining the two halves of the transmission together. So that's a spot where a screw goes through. So we can't uh, move it too far forward, our motor and pinion gear combination, before we start hitting this post right here. So very limited on what we can do as far as our gearing goes. Once again, we might have to put a brushed or a brushless motor in here ultimately um, to cover all our bases and get past that. Maybe a 1200 kV or possibly lower. Um, and a big motor, <laughs> a 550 size. So, anyway, there we go. We've got a bunch of leftover parts here for our Tamiya kit. And let's move up back on to our video. So, we want to lower the gearing to try to turn this thing into an actual working tipper truck. We might add four-wheel steering to it just to make it a little bit more capable here and there in certain areas. But, once again, I didn't think we were going to need it. Or I didn't want it on there to, you know, as far as looking realistic at, uh, for, for our tipper truck. Uh, it wouldn't be so realistic to have four-wheel steering. Uh, this truck in real life should be articulating in the center. And between our front axle and our forward middle axle, it should articulate in the center, much like that legendary uh, Buckster front end loader. It should articulate. But uh, since it doesn't, and it uses actual steer tires on the front, <laughs> to me it was going to give it four-wheel steering by adding steer tires uh, uh, to the back, to the rear axle. And that, once again, would not look right. But it would definitely be a little bit more handy in some off-road situations, which you will see in the run video. All right, so what we have before us here is our Spectrum motor. Once again, use our tires for rolling around here and making noise. We've got the Spectrum 55 turn motor, which we will be putting in here next. And uh, hopefully that will lower our, our RPMs down a little bit and give us a little bit more torque. Now, I've already loaded this truck up with some material on the side. I loaded it up in here in my RC workshop and put a couple of... Uh, fire bricks in the back of this, some real heavy ceramic fire bricks in the back of here, and it hauled it, <laughs> which was very surprising because the gearing is very tall, but uh, it was able to haul it. It completely squashed the suspension and compressed everything out, but it was able to haul it, and that was a good load, a good load of weight in there. So um, I know it'll do it right now in stock form, but I'd like to be able to just lower that RPM down a little bit, lower that RPM, or uh, uh, get our torque raised up a little bit. So we're going to start out with a 55 turn. If that doesn't do it, we might have to step it up to like an 80 turn or something like that. Um, or maybe to a 550 motor, maybe a brushless motor, um, just so we can get a little bit more swing on that. Now, other things that we have here is an RC four-wheel drive wired or wireless winch controller. And I'm using this to actuate our hydraulic cylinders or our faux electric cylinders here, our worm gear cylinders to raise and lower the bed. So this will be the remote that we'll be using to raise and lower the box. And I'll be hooking this up to a Spectrum DX4C transmitter, which is outdated. They don't make those anymore. 
you can get a DX5 or a DX6 if you're currently interested in uh, a Spectrum system or whatever system you prefer using. <laughs> There's all kinds of different brands out there that are uh, much cheaper. I, I just I happen to use Spectrum. So we're going to wire it up to that, uh, or the truck is wired up to that radio, and then we're just going to have this in our pocket or whatever for raising and lowering the uh, bed itself. Now we've got all the actuators over here, a bunch of different sizes. These are lift cylinders for a Wina 1550 or a 15... Um, 93 conversion, I think, or 1583 conversion, if you were to convert it to these uh, other screw servos. So these are meant for the uh, Wina construction equipment. Three different screw servos here, or screw actuators, or um, jack screws, whatever you want to call them. Um, basically just a worm gear screwdriver. And they can move about 11 pounds, roughly. Don't quote me on it, but uh, that's what my little 1550 was able to pull when I put it on a fishing scale. It was right around 11 pounds. So not too bad. And if we hook up two of these guys in conjunction, well, there we go. Now we got around 22 pounds of lifting force <laughs> combined, if not more. So I've got two sets of these, one set right here and one set right here, all identical. I'm not too sure which ones we're going to use. Probably end up using the longest ones and try to hook them up uh, in conjunction uh, where, where the normal ones would be sitting at. So the normal lift cylinder sits right between here and here. Between those two points, which is this little bow cylinder right here. So we might put them in, the, in that spot. I'm not too sure. I want to have them kind of looking somewhat uh, correct <laughs> and somewhat camouflage. So uh, that'll be the next step. Step, boys and girls, will be going on to our modification video for this thing. We already changed out our tires and wheels on it, and we added a set of uh, RC four-wheel drive rock crushers. Now these are some relatively small tires for what they are. Uh, basically, the same size as our stock lunchbox uh, two point two, as far as outer diameter goes. Now, I wanted to pay. You got to pay attention to your outer diameter when it comes to the, these kind of vehicles, a six by six in particular. Just because the larger you go on tires uh, on the back means they start getting closer together back here. And if you go too big, these guys will end up hitting each other. So you have to be careful on your tire size. So I tried to, I didn't know what this was before. I, I bought these tires or ordered the tires before I built the truck. So I just basically went off of this tire size here and tried to get one that was roughly the same size as our stock tire. So I knew there would be no conflict between our tires there on the back axle. So these are RC four-wheel drive, uh, RC4WD, Rock Crushers, Rock Crusher XT 1.9 tires. And this is the part number ZT0052. Sorry for the glare, Z-T0052, 1.9s, relatively small. Um, small tire, as far as things go. Now the wheels that we have on the vehicle are off of a Red Cat Gen 7. Those are Red Cat Gen 7 wheels. Now those wheels were actually donated to my channel from a channel subscriber, Matt Yono. What's up, Matt? Thanks for the wheels, bro. <laughs> uh, now, initially I was going to run the Red Cat Gen 8 wheels on this vehicle, and I have six of the Chrome Gen, uh, Gen 8 wheels. I actually uh, had four that I took off of my niece's Red Cat Gen 8 for stock wheels, and then I ordered uh, a set of wheels from Red Cat themselves uh, to complete the package. So I had four chrome Red Cat Gen 8 wheels on this thing with my custom painted Gen 7 beadlock rings. And the uh, they just didn't look right. <laughs> the chrome wheels did not look right on here. So I ended up, ended up going back to the black wheels that uh, Matt donated to the channel. So N Matt donated these to my channel for the beadlock rings because he knew I needed a set of rings uh, to complete that set of the, for the chrome ones. I had four, four and needed two more. And Matt sent me... Uh, uh, six tires, I believe, all together. So <laughs> many thanks once again, Matt, for those tires and wheels. And the tires, he sent me the stock tires that uh, as well. And those tires right now are currently on the Axial uh, SCX-10-3 early Ford Bronco way up there. as a stock Red Cat Interco IROX that came off of these wheels. So many, once again, many thanks there, Matt. We are getting, uh, definitely getting some use out of those wheels and the tires, surprisingly. Much appreciated there. So we're running a set of those rock crushers on here just to try to complete the package and make this thing look more to the part. So it looks more like a tipper truck versus um, something that you go out and goof around on with with these monster tires on here, which stuck out quite a ways on either side. 
uh, by comparison to our current tires. Not quite that far, but uh, they stuck out quite a ways. <laughs> Which are okay. They're okay. These are fun tires. They were a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun on the adventure course with this vehicle. Tires are not glued down, so we might have had a little bit of wheel spin when we were out there on video. But hey, we had open differentials as well, so... Uh, we had <laughs> all kinds of different spin ha happening on this thing. Uh, I need some uh, diff putty or something to put in the differentials on this thing just to uh, um, limit our slip a little bit there. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I could have locked this thing up from the beginning when I was doing the build on it and just glued up the differentials and uh, with some JB weld or something, uh, not being sponsored. But if I were to glue up the differentials, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to create a situation where we might break parts using it as a tipper truck. With open differentials, hauling a load of material, I know we're less likely to break parts in our drive frame than we, what we would be if we had locked differentials on it. So I'd rather have a, a weak point somewhere down the line. Uh, so right now, we're just gonna start off with open differentials. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. Uh, we can see it during our run video that we could definitely use some diff putty uh, or something in those differentials to slow them down a little bit. But um, Lock differentials would be ultimate, but I don't think our drivetrain could handle it with the CVDs and dog bones and things. Uh, they might be a little bit too light duty to handle that kind of stuff, especially under a load with a load of material in it. All right, so there we go on that nonsense. We changed out our tires and wheels. We added the, the RC4 Wheel Drive 1.9 Rock Rushers once again just to try to make this thing look a little bit more to the part of an actual tipper truck and not have our play tires on it. And once again, I had a lot of fun with this truck. I'd like to have two of these things, you know, one to have as a tipper truck and another one just for goofing around with because this thing is a total riot, a lot of fun. Uh, another way to try to lower the gearing, boys and girls, another thought on this is the Tamiya uh, Dynahead. There's another 6x6 vehicle. They make several different vehicles off of this chassis. They make the, bu the bus, the bullhead, and the Dynahead. Now, the Dynahead actually has a set of portal units that go on the ends of these A-arms which lower the gearing on the vehicle. Having that portal on there is another gear reduction. So um, you, uh, technically speaking, we could buy a Dyna head and put these parts on it and turn a Dyna head into a tipper truck and have the lower gearing from the portal axle units. Now the only problem with that, uh, which would, would, would cure our gearing problem, our, ge our gearing situation, but the only problem it would do is it would lift our vehicle up a little bit higher. <laughs> Hitting the portals on there is going to lift the vehicle up a little bit higher, and that's going to give our uh, Buckster front-end loader and our excavators a harder time reaching into the back of the vehicle because we're going to be raising it up even higher. So it'll be diff more difficult to load, which means we'll have to, um, the chances of having to use a loading platform versus being able to load on flat ground would be greater if we were to use the Dynahead uh, portals on this thing in order to lower our gearing. But that is a way that we could do it. And it would probably be the best way to go about it when it comes to trying to lower the gearing on it. But once again, I think this thing can handle it. I think it can handle a load of dirt in there with a stock motor on there. Uh, don't quote me on it and don't try it. If you do, do try it and you break something, that's your own darn fault. <laughs> but I think it can handle it with my personal truck. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cross my fingers and say that it can handle it. One more thing that I did to the vehicle here that we're going to talk about just before we go into our run video. Uh, once again, we're going to come, we're going to do a totally separate build video here on turning, converting it into a chipper truck. But one other thing that I had to do to this vehicle, uh, was, was to modify the bed so we could fit in a larger battery pack essentially. So let's take a quick peek at that. Excuse me for stammering here and jumping around. I've got this kind of loosely fit so I can take our bed off and show you guys this nonsense. So our battery sits right in here, right in this open cavity. That is where our battery normally goes, right there. So the bottom of our bed, right down here, it did have some strips of plastic that was extending up off the bottom of our bed, right along here. And it stuck up essentially about as high as these little locators right here. So in order to fit a larger battery in here, a normal size 7.2 volt or 7.4 volt 2S LiPo, 7.4 volt boys wheels not 7.2 but a normal size 7.4 volt battery uh, in order to put that 7.4 in here uh, it wasn't going to fit with those ridges that they had on the bed so basically i just took a, a pair of pliers a pair of needle nose pliers and uh, once again this is a do it your own risk kind of situation started down here at the bottom and just pinched it and twisted and pinched it and twisted and pinched it and twisted and kept the pliers nice and flat up against the bed and just gently pinch and twist a little bit at a time just a little bit at a time just kept nibbling at it and just peeled those strips right off of there as carefully as I as carefully as I could 
without uh, damaging the inside of our bed and compromising any kind of uh, structural rigidity that's uh, going to be involved with turning this thing into an actual working chipper truck. So to me, I had a couple of little ridges coming off of here, and that was resting on the battery and was limiting the size of the battery that we could put in here. So I stripped that little bit of plastic off of there, and uh, there we go. We've got the room to do, put a larger battery in here. Now we can run 2S and 3S LiPos in the back of here. Once again, on this video, to run the 3S, I had to wedge it in just like that in between our battery stay, our whole bed hold down, and the battery tray. And otherwise, we were running these little WO toy packs in here um, with the original setup. <laughs> but now, after having it modified, we can run a full-size pack in here. But man, doesn't that thing look cool without that bed on there? That is a cool-looking truck. There's no doubt about it. Electric uh, stuff and all the electronics on the inside using a Axial AE5 ESC. We've got that wedged in underneath the hood under here. And a um, Savox SW0231 steering servo that's been custom painted. I custom painted that to a while ago to match the vehicle. So it has a Savox SW0231 implement yellow. And we've got another one identical to this on my uh, Vatera K10 Ascender. That I'm using <laughs> and we might have to reappropriate to this to uh, give it four-wheel steering if we decide to do that uh, once again RC full drive 1.9 rock crushers I think they're more fitting for the vehicle and the black beadlock wheels with the yellow beadlock rings make it look nice as well kind of looks like an old Yamaha Tri-Z three-wheeler <laughs> even our wheel hexes back here we've got yellow wheel hexes with our black uh, uprights Black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow. It turns out pretty good. Not a bad vehicle. Uh, all our open air holes here on the transmission, this is something that was really bothering me, was all these open air holes that we have on the transmission. I, I was talking about that during our build video. I was talking about using some RTV or something to put over top of those holes on the outside to seal that stuff off. And I decided to uh, use grease on the inside to seal that off. So while I was building the vehicle, that was one major complaint with this whole build was that Tamiya didn't include enough grease, and that's something that Tamiya uh, just doesn't do, something that I've been complaining about with Tamiya kits since I was a kid, <laughs> was that they don't give you enough grease. So they gave us a small little container of anti-wear grease for all of our dog bones, and we went through this whole thing, plus another one that we had left over from another build. So a lot of grease, and then we, they give you these little metal tubes of grease for the vehicle, and they only gave us two. Well, this thing is all gears from front to back. I mean, all gears, gear, 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 all the way along. Nothing but gears in here. So a lot of grease needs to get used, but you don't want to use too much because that'll create mind. But nevertheless, it needs a lot of grease as well as three differentials that require grease as well. So to me, it doesn't give you enough. So I had to go out to the garage and use some regular red wheel bearing grease for the rest of the project and ended up using grease. That's the moral of the story to fill in all the backside of all these little air holes. So wherever there's an air hole on the transmission, I've got a big blob of grease on the other side, uh, blocking dirt and water and stuff like that from getting back inside the case and um, contaminating the inside of the transmission. So there we go on that nonsense. Use grease to fill in the gaps on all our little air holes there. As far as, once again, underneath the body, we'll go ahead here and peel the body off this thing real quick. I mean, what the heck, we're here, right? This is a quick little overview on what we're looking at. It does have these micro body pins on here, which I do not like, but... Uh, they, they're kind of small, so they're less seen, less visible, which is the whole purpose of them. Not to be visible. Hard to grab, but uh, not visible. Got my Sunday shirt on a little holy. <laughs> Excuse me. The body, once again, uh, painted right from the factory, but you have to apply all the stickers, and there is a lot of stickers, and you have to cut all the stickers out uh, by hand. Sticker right here, sticker here, sticker there, sticker here, sticker here, sticker here. Big, long sticker starts here and goes all the way up along to here. <laughs> sticker here, stickers that go around the sides. Three or four individual stickers along here. A bunch of stickers that go around the windshield. Sticker for the windshield wiper, for the trim, the A60H part. Uh, just a bunch of individual stickers everywhere. And that was a pain in the butt. But, great looking cab, all in all, a little bit uh, dusty on the inside, she's been sitting here for a little while, 
and a custom painted or already came painted from the factory, so that was cool. Uh, but cutting out the sticker is a big pain in the butt. That's my moral of that story. Uh, have her body mounts all trimmed and ready to go. Bumper is spring mounted. You'll hear that smacking around quite a bit on our video. Um, snow on the ground in a nice smooth bumper. It acted like a sled throughout most of the video. <laughs> Once again, I had a lot of fun with this vehicle out in the snow. It was a real fun truck. Uh, so looking underneath the hood here, we've got an Axial AE5 ESC. Old school AE5 ESC. I've had this thing since 2016. So uh, old ESC since we started the channel. We've got a Spectrum SR515 5-channel five receiver in there. And a RC4 wheel driver, RC4 WD wireless or wired no wireless winch controller down there underneath that so our wireless winch controller is underneath our receiver so that's double sided double sided tape to here this is double sided tape to here and our receiver is double sided taped to the winch controller there's not much room underneath here to work with so that pretty much utilizes all the space inside the cab and we can actually see our esc i think a little bit and some of the stuff through the inside of the cab which is kind of a bummer but really, that's the only place that you have to put your electronics, so very limited on that aspect. Truck, once again, a lot of fun. I haven't ran it with our other tires on here just yet, so that'll be a, a new first run for you guys and gals out there when we do that. Uh, once again, it was a lot of fun with the Lunchbox tires, with our stock style tires that came with it. I keep saying Lunchbox because those were the first, that was the first vehicle was the Tamiya Lunchbox to have these tires. When it comes to Tamiya vehicles, the Lunchbox was the first one to have this tire on there. Not this wheel, this one has a hex on it. The lunchbox wheels have like a, a five star, crappy five star up on them. <laughs> the originals do. So we got an original Midnight Pumpkin up there and that's the original body on my Blizzard for that one. But, uh, and there's a newer style lunchbox right there that's unmilt. So it probably uses that same hub style. I'm not too sure if they went away from that or not. I think they still do. I can see it up there in the picture. Right there on the back using that same hub style <laughs> is that one right there so yeah that's what that anyhow there we go on that that is where those tires originally originated from was from the lunch boxes i had an original one way back in the day I had original midnight pumpkin way back in the day and once again we got an original midnight pumpkin up there on the shelf and uh, that's where these tires came from. So these were a lot of fun out here in the snow. Make sure you check out the rest of this video. Once again, I'm sorry for the long intro here leading into it, but it is what it is. And we're talking about the channel and we're talking about the truck and where we're going with the channel and absences on the channel. <laughs> and there we go. So to me, a Volvo A60H, without any further ado, boys and girls, let's go into our run video on this one. And uh, we'll conclude it at the end of the run video. That will be the end of the video. And the next time we see this vehicle will be our mod video when we start adding our uh, screw servos to it and um, try to convert this thing into a tipper truck. That's basically the last thing that we have to do is actually just mount those screw servos up to it and we're good to go. Um, and we'll change out the motor. <laughs> Maybe lower the gearing a little bit. So, okay, we've got a little bit more work to do. But it's going to be pretty easy, I think. Uh, the hard Mounting the servos is going to be the hardest part. Otherwise, uh, I think we're limited on our gearing. I think the only thing we can do in that aspect is to change out our motor. Uh, and go to a higher turn motor to slow it down. Uh, possibly a larger motor, a 1550 or a 550, not a 1550, but a 550 motor. Uh, maybe even a 750 if we can fit something of that size in here or something bigger than a 550. Uh, maybe something out of a Power Wheels <laughs> to try to uh, get give us that low torque that we need to turn into a tipper truck. One way or the other, we're going to turn this baby into a tipper truck and start using it in conjunction with our wine and construction equipment because we're just begging for a tipper truck for those things. We need one. Uh, these guys over here just aren't cutting it. They're not getting the job done. All right, so there we go, boys and girls. Let's move into our run video. Enjoy the video once again. Um, make sure to uh, click the like, like, like button if you like it. I don't ask my subscribers to do that, but hey, if you feel like doing it, feel free to do it. And uh, we will see you all on the next video. Thanks again. Monday, January 8th, 2023. First run with the Tamiya Volvo A60H. <laughs> Let's see how she does out here in the snow. She's been outside acclimating for a few hours. For those who don't know about running your vehicles in the snow, it's always best whether you have tires or tracks, to leave your vehicle outside in a cardboard box or in a plastic sled um, or on the ground sitting on top of a cardboard box. <laughs> uh, just some leave some separation between your tires and the snow and uh, leave, let the vehicle sit outside for a couple hours so it cools down and matches 
acclimates to the outside temperature and you'll have less trouble with snow sticking to your vehicle. So this vehicle's been acclimated. It's been sitting outside for a couple hours. First run with it. Not sure what to expect. We are running a 2S LiPo stock motor, 18 tooth pinion gear. And trying to get a uh, feel for the vehicle uh, to see if we can turn this thing into an actual working dump truck or tipper truck. And I'd like to figure out um, how low I can gear this thing, or how slow it can crawl, and what it can haul. <laughs> More importantly, we're going to make our way out to the adventure course and see how she does on the adventure course today. Cool temperatures, acclimated vehicle, no problem with snow sticking to the tires. We do not have the four-wheel steering hooked up on this vehicle. I debated that when we were doing the build on it. I just didn't think it was going to look realistic. The vehicle's not doing too bad today, really, so far. I like how she's driving. It's pretty smooth. Once again, not too sure how many turns the stock motor is. I'm guessing 27 turns, but I mean, that's just a guess. Once again, we have that 55 turn, 540 <laughs> that we can put in here. Getting a little one-wheel peel going on. Probably could have put some stiffer grease in the differentials and uh, create a little bit more drag in the differential. Maybe it would have been less likely to slip <laughs> and open up on us. Yeah, a little roll and we got it. No problem on that little hill. Tack down the snow a little bit. Well, we're still making our way into the adventure course. We haven't gotten there yet. Approaching the podium. Yeah, there's areas that that four-wheel steering would definitely help. <laughs> still, don't think it's going to look realistic on this vehicle. And we've got the open differential blues here. I know better than to expect this vehicle to crawl over this <laughs> hill here. Um, a lot of vehicles have had troubles with this in the last few videos. I know we can power up and over it. See if we can creep our way around it. My main goal is just to see how crawl friendly this vehicle is. Once again, what we need to do to lower lower our gearing down. See if we can get more torque out of the vehicle. Want to turn it into an actual tipper truck. <laughs> so yeah, next motor that we're going to put in here is the uh, 55 turn 540. And we'll see how that treats it. Once again, I think ultimately I'm going to have to go to a 550 to get the torque out of it, the torque that we're going to need, roll over the hill, <laughs> I know this truck is more of a toy, <laughs> like a lunchbox kind of vehicle, light basher, not so much bashing, but go out and move around and have fun with. Not meant to crawl so much. And definitely not meant to haul. <laughs> Other than haul butt. Like I said, I'd like to be able to gear this thing down or can't gear it down. <laughs> we might be able to drop it down one, two. Slow it down, but yet maintain... Uh, yet have enough torque to haul a load of material. It's difficult to explain the thought in my mind, but...
Approaching the frog pond, a couple first couple of hills there, we obviously powered over those. It's to me a plastic. It seems a little bit on the brittle side of when I, when I was building it. <laughs> All that yellow plastic seems pretty stiff. So I'd be really leery about breaking that stuff in, uh, on a cold day. We may only do one or two runs with this vehicle in the winter time, uh, just for our initial testing. We're going to take it out, obviously, today. We'll probably change out the tires and try it again. <laughs> Not too bad, straight up climb. We're making it into the frog pond. It's actually doing better than the Axial Early Ford Bronco with the Falcon Wild Peak tires. Give up on the crawling method and it's not a problem. Making our way off the bridge and into the bombed out pits here. This could be the pits too. I see, I foresee belly snags. <laughs> Going through here, we might have to just kind of get on it and stay on it until we make it to the other side. If we can get a good roll here. Oh, hit our front bumper. Today we are running on a 3000 milliamp or a 3 amp WL Toys 2S LiPo. This is the one that I uh, used to get our electronics dialed in here or zeroed out. And one of my only 2S batteries that will fit in the vehicle. <laughs> All my other batteries are a little bit too fat to get in here. We're going to remove some material off the bottom of the bed. That way I can get a larger battery in here. I have a 3S light bulb in my pocket, a small one. No, we went out first. I have a small 3S in my pocket, and we're going to try to fit that in here a little bit later. We'll have to wedge it in between uh, the box and the yellow bracket that holds the, the bed down. Oops. Try to make it up over the sill, not going around the outside. Hey, we made it. <laughs> Maybe not the way that we were intending on going, but hey, we still made it over the hill. A little throttle persuasion. Working our way into the tunnel. Quiet crawler, approaching logs. Snow's a little crunchy today. I didn't check out the outdoor temperature. It's actually getting a little warmer. I set up the truck, it was rather cool outside, and it's gradually warming up. So the snow is turning into packing snow. <laughs> servo we are running a Savox SW0231MG for those who didn't follow the build on this truck. Not a new truck by any means. Obviously not a new build either by any means. New build for me. <laughs> new build for the channel. But definitely not a new build for YouTube. radius isn't too bad really for uh, just having the front wheels and not having that four wheel steering hooked up. The next big rock area.
scraping our bumper upon approach. A spring mounted bumper. trying to crawl in here a little bit <laughs> I think coming in here on a roll is the best thing our best way to go or seems to be the mode of operation for today with this vehicle just keep it rolling keep it rolling don't stop <laughs> Better, doing better uh, in the snow out here on the course than the Tamiya Stadium truck did in uh, dry conditions. The old school Tamiya 4x4 Stadium truck. But we're six wheel drive versus 4x4. Both vehicles have open differentials all the way around. It'd be more beneficial if we had a locker. We could do that, of course, for this vehicle, but. The splines on the outdrive cups are aren't the best. So I really don't want to risk stripping those out. If we lock up the differentials, that's definitely gonna help <laughs> uh, speed up the strip out factor on the splines. towards the storm damage. And over towards the tree stumps. And into the tombstones. No stop to the tombstones. We're not going to talk about it. We're just going to go through it. <laughs> Maybe. If we can. to the rolling brick hill, first rolling brick hill, off camber bricks. She's not going to crawl out, I can guarantee you that. We're going to have to power our way up this hill if we can. Don't know if it's possible. steering would help us too. <laughs> Try to turn our back wheels a little bit. <laughs> Try to go for the bypass trail here. <laughs> off the gas, stabbing, just trying to get it rolling. There we go. <laughs> we made it through the bypass. Yeah, I pretty much know that it's not going to make it up that hill. Or that hill. <laughs> Uh, we'll just see if we can make it around the outside of this hill and back up over to there. Maybe. Stay 
Stand the gas. Sinking down to our chassis there. Oh, we're gonna get buried on the rocks there. We got to cut right and avoid the rumble strips if we can. Way up the hill. Ooh, it didn't cut right. Don't like the sound of that. It's probably the bed slapping the noise we're hearing and the bumper smacking on the body. Oh, don't get stuck in there. It's all downhill from there, buddy. Oh, don't go that way. <laughs> Except for that first drop. This is where four-wheel steering would help us as well. Maybe we will put the four-wheel steering on there, Doug. <laughs> Talking to my friend Doug Elwell. Hey, it is the uh, SHI T on YouTube. We, uh, talking about that four-wheel drive and debating on or four-wheel steering and debating on putting it on the vehicle. Yeah, right now, that four-wheel steering would come in handy. Yeah, we're not making it back that way. It's too much of an incline. Maybe see if we can drive up here and cut up over top of the uh, rumble strips and cut it right from there. I got the bonsai it though. Oh, within reason. <laughs> the next path here though, we're going to try to back up and pick a direction. far back. Yeah, that's another spot that four-wheel steering would help us out a little bit. Yeah, I might put it on here. <laughs> Go back and install the four-wheel steering on this vehicle. Gotta keep down the path. Sliding off. We don't want to go down the hill. Oh, we're going down there. Oh, oh we're really going to go down that way. Oh, I think we're so well. We're going to end up going downhill here. <laughs> Made it back up to the other rock path. The reason I keep blipping the throttle is because it keeps moving it forward <laughs> like that. Oh, fly enough path into the trees. And going towards the wall. Go on, baby. <laughs> Don't stop. I'm pretty sure we're not going to make it through the rocky switchback or even into the rocky switchback. I don't think we have enough bumper clearance here on the front to get over this wall. Maybe we do. Hit it on a roll, maybe. Oh, that was a roll. Weak steering servo. Good point in time. <laughs>
Oh yeah, she stuck pretty good. Oh, she's wedged. <laughs> wedged in there. Had her back tire wedged up against this little rock here, and the front tire was wedged in here, so it was literally wedged between the tires. That's why we couldn't steer it. We were trying to push the weight of the entire vehicle. And the gas, and we're making it. <laughs> Just don't let off the gas. I'm actually kind of well. I shouldn't talk. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm actually kind of impressed with the lunchbox tires today for for doing so well, and the truck too. This is normally your explore territory. We are off the course. switchback can't make that right turn <laughs> I need to pull the steering about to go over the wall uh, we're going over the wall <laughs> Just don't stop driving. Stop the stop the train from landing position. Right up against the wall. Leaves underneath all that stuff. That's no good for traction either. Rocky switchback, this is all rocks for the newcomers. Staggered, cobblestone, bearing in size. We are kind of stuck here. I don't think we're going to be able to get ourselves around to the right. And maybe we can make our way up a, up the hill. <laughs> Go around the switch back. Get hung up on the wall. All right, hey, we went around the switch back. <laughs> Haven't done that with too many vehicles out here. This might be the first to go around the switchback. Starting out rough. <laughs> Tires, they are not glued down to the wheels. So we could experience some uh, could, could experience a situation where our tires start spin, our wheels start spinning inside the tires. And I am all kinds of tongue tied today, I'm sorry, sorry. I've been up all night. I just finished building this truck. <laughs> haven't slept yet. Charged up the battery. Want to get it out here in the daylight. And then uh, take a nap afterwards. Oh, yeah, I'm stuck. Yeah, maybe not. Get on it, baby. We're down in it, down in it. It's a deep, deep area, all dug out. No rocks in this area, but last couple of videos when we came out here last fall, this area is pretty dug out, dirt area, pretty gnarly section. A lot 
our weird angles. We're fighting them. The other section coming up out of here is not any better. <laughs> Axial AE5 ESC, once again, old school AE5. Not very old school, probably from uh, 2016, 2017, somewhere in there. They do have it set up for crawling with a brake. 100% brake. Oh, we made it. <laughs> Next section, though, is really, it's even worse than the section we just went through. Yeah, this section is terrible. Terrible. And that hill coming back out of it is just vertical. <laughs> As seen in other previous videos. So we'll hold our camera up high, excuse the camera angles, because we're just going to stay on the gas going through here, I think, if we can make it in here at all. Uh, wide open up to there. Again, 3 amp lipo, 2 amp lipo, 3000 milliamp, kind of small. 25C burst on that one, not much burst. Actually, that one might be 30C, sorry, 30C, but still, not much burst. Yeah, we need a hand of God through here. Pretty uneven ground. We're losing a lot of bursts with this battery. I've got the other battery back in my pocket. Could be the ESC heating up it again. Yep, it's running on a power. Running the one steam, she is. So close, so close. Almost at it. <laughs> it was close. Dirty snow. Hey, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to be stuck on the other side, though. That's pretty good, though. Not many vehicles have made it over. The Axial Bronco uh, did not make it over. Yeah, a couple different sets of tires and still didn't make it over. TRX 4 Bronco uh, was the only one to make it over. TRX 6 couldn't make it over. We made it over, but I don't think we're going to make it much further than that. <laughs> we are stuck right there. back a little bit and see if we can power our way through one way or the other. Oh, we just kind of dove into it. <laughs> Diving back into the hole. Work our way around it. Nope, we just keep diving right back into the hole, smacking our bumper right off the bottom. Reposition it. Reposition ourselves. line here if we can without bottoming it out oh we shouldn't have stopped there we go <laughs> all right work our way back into the rock section and 
not stop. Anyway, there we go. Not stopping is key with this thing. <laughs> Keep your momentum going. All right, well, which way do we go? Which way do we go? The cab's all fogged up there. We could try to climb up the log bridge, but that's really probably pretty futile. I can see our X6 actually made it up the log bridge. We haven't had it back out here since we changed the tires out on that TRX6. We put a set of Duratrax e Woods on it. So we should probably bring it back out here at some point in time now that we've got some snow on the ground again. Not bad so far with the 6x6. Six six. It's kind of getting up there pretty good. Just ramming onto the bridge though. Might be kind of hard on the Tamiya Blaster. Good thing we got those soft balloon tires. Oh, we're soft. Big holes on that bridge. Yeah, we could fight it, this and fight it, 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 but uh, ultimately, I think we're going to drag around up the bridge. Try to make it up around the corner here, try to make this hard right. And that is a hard right. Oh, don't go that way. If this thing fell off the bridge, it would probably shatter. I don't want that. Oh, almost it went off the bridge backwards. <laughs> just the way that plastic sounds, you know, it's just that, that, that kind of plastic that just sounds like it would shatter. Especially in the, in the cold temperatures. Uh, forward steering again would be helpful in this situation. Corner's uh, on a little bit of an off camber there. Anticipate the truck's movement with the camera, it's not happening. <laughs> if we get up this thing, it's just going to be a matter of luck, really. It's kind of pointing and shooting here. Everywhere we go, we've just been pointing and shooting. Real skill is not falling off the bridge. Logs, a little slick. Oh, don't go that way. <laughs> just getting knocked over that way. We've got the wheels turned to the right. We're just getting pushed over there. Yeah, I don't think we're going to make it, boys and girls. Not very easily, anyways. Get a little assistance over that edge there.
Ooh, don't go that way. <laughs> Slide back downhill. It's tough not to crack. Some of the other trucks just make it look so easy. Just sliding. One fox tires. Wet logs, lunchbox style tires. These guys are just slipping and sliding. Time to go. Hope we don't slide off the bridge here. Avoid the big root here. Keep it going. <laughs> Keep going, baby. Kind of cut out right there. Might be the ESC you might have shut off. Maybe the battery hit us a low, might hit the low voltage mode on the ESC. Look at that, I don't know if she's going so. Motor's definitely frosty down there. <laughs> See a lot of snow stuck in the motor. Yeah, it's cut right out there. It was wide open, so it's a little bit underpowered here. It might be doing damage to our battery at this point in time. Yeah, it just cut out again. Hear that or motor wires are making it breaking down here. A lot of slush on the motor. over the first hill though <laughs> it's not bad the trx6 was having trouble with that as well with lock differentials and bigger tires oh, i was about to give up on it it just quit working right there again just got out maybe at least motor wire or the bullet connectors, possibly. Yeah, again, cut out. Oh, we're off the course. Yep, keeps cutting out there. battery we are uh, definitely slowing down there's no doubt about that let's just hit pause real quick here and change our battery and see what happens we'll try another WL Toys 2S pack Alright, well, battery change out. Let's see if she's still cutting out. See if we have more power. Oh, I definitely have more, way more power. Yep, way more power. <laughs> A little 3 amp 2S LiPo it didn't last too long. We're still running on 2S. 
identical batteries actually. Number two. <laughs> pack A and pack B. Approaching old stump here. Not an easy climb to get into here, no doubt about that. A lot of weird angles. Oh, we're climbing the <laughs> climbing up old stuff. <laughs> bursting, bursting, bursting. Well, let's go around old stump. Pretty violent area. Another spot where four, four wheel steering would be good there. <laughs> we'll go around this area. Just cause. I don't want to hurt the truck. Not too bad. First day. <laughs> trying to climb the tree. Oh, I can't believe it, it made it. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it, it made it. <laughs> Not bad. That's a steep little area. We're hitting it not a roll though, not crawling it. Getting stuck up here in the sand. Bouncing off of rocks. Up over top of big rock. Right there. Skating down it. That front bumper kind of works like a sled <laughs> going downhill. That's a fun little truck so far. As we get stuck between trees. <laughs> Same falling down tree branch that was here the last time we were through with the TRX 6. Definitely a lot more snow on it then. See if we can jump our way over with this one. There you go. Make our way into the new uh, bedrock ridge here. Maybe. Gonna we'll fall on our butt in the process. High road or low road? I don't think we're gonna make up the high road. Maybe we will. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> We made it around the high road, not bad. Wonder if we could make it up the low road. If we can turn around in here. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Not what we want here. Ah, come on, baby. You can do it. Ah, yeah. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, fun little truck. I like it. Not a bad little truck. It's just, it's kind of fun the way it is. I mean, let alone trying to turn it into a tipper truck. I think we can turn it into a tipper truck. I think we can slow this thing down a bit more. Make it work friendly. But it's pretty fun on its own. At least out in this stuff. Open differentials do make things make life a little bit more challenging. Getting off course. Oh! <laughs> we almost rolled it. Look at that. We're just hanging there. Just stuck there, man. Suck. That's good. Uh huh. We turn left and pin it, maybe, maybe. 
Ah, maybe we'll roll it over the rest of the way. <laughs> First rollover in the books for the little A60H. I like this little truck. It's fun. It is a fun little truck. Oh, baby, go, 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 go. In the rocks, over the rocks. Go down there, you'll be stuck, buddy. Oh, on the rocks again. Trying to turn it around. <laughs> and stay on a roll. S power. Hey, we made it. <laughs> Didn't like me talking crap about it. This other log crossing, probably not going to make it up over this. I mean, it's asking a lot. It's asking a lot to make it up this way, really. This next log crossing, it's pretty vicious. Sloping downhill, big time. Oh, <laughs> we were on that thing. Going for a slide. <laughs> log again. Oh, we're getting stuck out of log. Oh, boo. Come on, baby. Get off that log. Steady roll. Steady roll. Oh, no. <laughs> Skating it. Real slide. We made it. Nice. <laughs> nice up. Up and over. That's a wicked little area, man. It's on a it's all leaning downhill. Those logs are frozen. G601, not doing too bad. Stay on it, baby. Stay on it. Oh. <laughs> it's doing good. All the way down through here. Up and around through the berm. Path Prometheus. And on up. Doing pretty good. I like this little truck. I really like this truck. This is a fun truck. I want another one. <laughs> I want one to play with and one that I can turn into a tipper truck. It's gonna be all kinds of snowy and muddy by the time we get done. Oh, come on, baby, go, go, go. We made it. Stay on it, baby, into the storm damage. We gotta make this berm and see if we can power through that storm damage without destroying our truck. Half the challenge is just trying to do this stuff at speed. Oh, that was a hard chunk. Must have been our bumper. I hope it was the bumper. We made it through. Well, log bridge or rock bridge. That log bridge is going to be really sketchy. We're probably not going to be able to uh, make the gap. The truck might be too narrow, or uh, the width on it might not be quite right. 
log bridge is definitely the most challenging. I think we need to get into it. <laughs> Off cambers, weird rock. Taking it downhill. We're not gonna be able to line up for it. Not like that. Maybe if we put it up here by hand, we might be able to do it. Good. Oops, I don't think we're gonna be able to pull up, pull far, pull that far left or right. No, keeps going back in the same direction. change our approach so we can <laughs> try to line this up right but with open differentials we just keep getting uh, hung up by that uh, I mean, as soon as we get back into that position we keep sliding oh I know she's gonna pop the slide off oh yeah she's sliding off <laughs> all downhill from there Let's see if we can turn around and go over the rock bridge <laughs> nope, we went right over the wall, right over the rock wall, and back down underneath the log bridge. Well, we can bypass around and take our way back up here. easy. <laughs> Falling off on the other side there, on the passenger side. Oh, there we go. Contact. Definitely know when that bumper comes into contact with stuff. A fun little truck case. I didn't mention that, which I know I did. <laughs> it's just really a fun truck. Having a good time with this one today. Doing pretty good through all this nonsense.
I don't know how she's going to do in this storm, da storm damage area. stuff <laughs> no traction to be had but she's doing all right man the truck is doing pretty good no i think it's stuck about to be oh we're off course I'll give you a little hand of god there truck little volvo little volvo that could Out of here, we are uh, twisted up. Hit the reset button. Hit the reset button. Hey, not bad. Fun little truck. Oh. <laughs> Getting into some dirt there. is how steep it is, eh? All our big wins with this truck today have been on a roll. <laughs> Hard dirt there. Ah, oh, we almost had it. <laughs> we almost had it. Rocking on that center axle. Oh, we made it around it, but not quite over it. Have to make it over it, not around it. Ah, there we go. We made it. <laughs> That counts. Exhale. Running out of torque here on our battery. Get enough momentum, we might be able to get this. Momentum is your friend. Getting turtled up. Low one power, running low one power. Yep, we are running low on power. Full tilt. Losing our burst. burst. Well, she hasn't started cutting out yet like the other battery. <laughs> Starts doing that, we'll switch it out to the 3S light bulb. If we can fit it in there. We're making ourselves a little groove here. <laughs> Where we keep tracking back and forth through this hole. We can make a new track. We can make it up. Or not. I'll call our momentum. Swap out the battery. 3S LiPo. Whoa, 2200 milliamp literally wedged in between the bed and the battery uh, bed support. <laughs> wedged in there. Only way I could fit it in there. That's what she said. <laughs> Don't know if this motor is 3S capable or not. <laughs> ESC is. Don't know about the motor. You might smoke out this to me a motor. Could have a smoke show going on here. It does look a little smoky over there on that side. <laughs> we did make it up the hill there, right on that side. 
Hey, we made it. We made it. Torn up from the floor up. But she made it. On 3S, and we got a battery cable hanging loose there. Yeah, it was kind of a wedge fit in there, so I don't want to expect that to last there very long. There's a place to put that battery cable. It's not good. It's kind of hanging in the breeze. Make our way around to the exit here. Maybe. Three S to the exit. Probably gonna be a steep climb on the way back out of here too. Right into that one. <laughs> Bury the nose. Surprised we backed out of it. <laughs> oh, we are not going to make it through that hole. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Don't know if we'll be able to make it over through this one either. We might have to cut through the valley and go around. Pretty steep hills there. It's asking a lot for the truck to get through it. Torque twisting our way through. <laughs> Little Volvo, not bad. Not bad. Get the stuck as we make our way towards the exit here. Towards the podium. TRX 6 got stuck on the podium and <laughs> we made it right through. Not bad with the Volvo, not too shabby. Well, let's go take it out and uh, mess around with the powder and try to clean it off a little bit here as we exit the adventure course. She did good. I mean, really. We went around the entire adventure course. Well, one direction. <laughs> Up into the woods and back down through and all around through all this nonsense. And, and back down and back out. So we didn't go through this section over here. But hey, she did pretty good. Two batteries later. <laughs> Three batteries later on her 3S pack right now. Not bad though. She scoots. I'd like to slow it down. Like I previously mentioned, I'd like to uh, get it so we can haul a load of material in the back at low speeds and not strain out the motor too bad. Wide open, yeah. Not bad. Doing pretty good. Fun little truck. Me a Volvo A60H. I got another one out, a new one. Was it the A60Y or something? A60Y, I think, or A60 something. It's not the A one. Yeah. Fun truck. Got some, uh, got some torque right out of the hole. Yeah, four wheel steering. That'd be fun, Doug, and stuff like this. You could. Cut the wheels and probably get a good donut going. <laughs> With that four wheel steering. Point 200 milliamp 2S light, but this one's not going to last too long. I've had this battery for a few years. So we get some reverse donuts going. Yeah, not bad. Spin it around, it'll be a little easier. Truck's gonna be a nice mess by the time we get done. <laughs> I mean, 
you all loaded up with snow. <laughs> Just totally loaded up. Over the gravel pile. Last time I used this battery was in my WL Toys 10428A out on Wolverine Lake when I did the big hydroplane run <laughs> and almost lost my truck after I flipped it out in the middle of the water. I had to paddle my way back to shore with the truck upside down for most of the paddle, I think. And by the time we made it to shore, the truck was just barely moving. <laughs> Barely moving about that fast. That's with this battery. Gen's Ace 2200 milliamp 3S Lipo. Small pack. Over three branch. On the hill. Slowing down in the deep snow. Pull, pull back down. Yeah, it's a fun little truck, no doubt about it. I right, guess gonna do it, boys and girls. Very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. First run with the Tamiya Volvo A60H, the vehicle that I received for Christmas last year. <laughs> Not this past Christmas, but the one before that. And we just finished putting it together. Uh, this morning with uh, putting the stickers on there so a long time in the making on this one uh, next video for this truck or the next series for this truck is going to be trying to turn this vehicle into an actual working uh, tipper truck that we can use in conjunction with the Wina construction equipment as we get the stick out of here it's driving me nuts <laughs> all right boys and girls very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video Questions or comments are always welcome as always, and we will see you all on the next one. Thanks again.